Hello friends, uh, I woke up this morning and I decided that even though I've got a cold and even though I've done very little to prepare for this, uh, I'm, uh, I've been working on something I'd like to share with you and talk through it because uh, I don't know if you feel this way, but with the uh, impending implosion of, of Twitter.com, uh, I feel suddenly uh, like a renewed sense that maybe I should own a bigger portion of the parts of the internet that I contribute to, uh, which leads to the classic programmer who is dangerous enough with website stuff. Uh, a conundrum of building a blog over the course of a weekend with the hope that maybe I'll start blogging. Um, in this case, because I'd been down that road a bunch, I wanted to take a turn that would allow me to publish much more uh, effortlessly. Like the reason I was always tweeting so much was that I was like really easy to just, you know, fire them off from my phone. And so I needed a workflow that allowed me to write quick quick and dirty posts from my phone, as well as a uh, permission structure to write very, very short posts, whereas I, I typically can write way too much. And so my inspiration right out of the gate was uh, Daring Fireball, I, one of my favorite blogs. John Gruber is a, a, you know, a just sort of a, an institution uh, with blogging. But he, weirdly enough, his link blog style of blogging um, is not very well understood, not very you know, uh, often imitated these days. So if you're not familiar, just to walk through the information architecture, like what Daring Fireball is, is there are posts, but not very many of them. If you go to the archive, you know, maybe he turns out two, three, four real posts a month. You go in, it's like, okay, this is his Apple Watch Ultra post. You know, it is a permalink. You look at the RSS and this is the, the alternate link. This is the, the canonical link for that. But most of the stuff that he posts are just like links to other stuff. So like in, 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 in this instance, this is a link to, uh, you know, a third party website and its article. And what he's just doing is providing color commentary or giving his take on something, usually with pull quotes. Um, and if you want to, uh, you know, share the, the, the daring fireball link, uh, the permalink here, uh, is just available on this little star and then you can go and now the URL is, you know, updated to, to have that full thing. So I've always really liked this approach because it seems like something that if I could do that, then I would have, um, uh, uh, I would more fluidly. Uh, share things that I'm thinking instead of just like texting them to a friend or, or tweeting them into the uh, into the ether. So I uh, undertook a, a little bit of a journey here, and I had an existing app uh, at justin.searles.co that was written in Hugo, and Hugo is a great, super fast static site generator. It was a very basic blog. Basically, it was just <laughs> dealing with uh, medium.com's impending implosion and pulling down all of my posts as quickly as possible into Markdown and, and grabbing their images and so forth uh, so that I could have a place for them to live in the event that Medium went away. Medium didn't go away, which you know probably says something about whether we should be predicting the literal demise of Twitter or just its you know descent. But... I had that. I had the bones of a site there, so I'd already kind of gone through some of the motions. And Hugo is also very flexible. Um, you know, I'm not going to explain how to build a Hugo app here because it's written in GoLang. Like a lot of the configuration is kind of arcane, uh, to be honest. Uh, and 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 the community forums can sometimes seem hostile to users asking questions, but otherwise it's really fast and really good. I know I'm really selling it, but it's very feature rich. It's very uh, flexible for for doing things like in. In this exact case, we have two kinds of posts. We have two different content sections, and, in, in, and we have a main feed that needs to be able to merge them together nicely, and we also need to be able to use those data types to build things like an Atom XML uh, RSS feed. All right, so that was the first piece. The second piece was I had written that original site with a particular style, lightweight, not, not, nothing too fancy. Um, in SAS and just raw SAS and light, I got really like bent out out of shape with a lot of confusing, overly complex selectors. And every time I changed anything, you know, it was just the Peter Griffin blinds uh, gif happening on me. Uh, uh, my friend uh, uh, Derek Briggs over from Planet Scale, uh, he paired with me on, on Tailwind just enough for, for an afternoon for me to see the light and realize that the locality of, of writing in utility classes and scoping them down as I work through a page allows me to think outside in about how the page is structured in a way that I was never able to do when I was balancing a CSS file and a markup page. So the, uh, the, 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 the first order of business when I was doing this work was to throw away all the original styles and restyle it from the ground up, even though it looks very similar in Tailwind. And amazingly, it took like an hour and a half, uh, which 
is a level of productivity that in you know 20 years of tootling around on the web uh, i've never experienced before so so if you haven't played with tailwind yet check it out for hosting for static sites i really like netlify um, normally i use heroku for running a lot of my apps uh, uh and, and and simple SaaS services because like you know the, the managed postgres is amazing as as awesome as Heroku's managed Postgres is, it provides no CDN story out of the box. So like you know, edge edge network delivery of content in a cached and performant way that's not going to completely obliterate your server if you ever get you know um, fireballed or 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 uh, linked to from Hacker News or something. Netlify is the opposite. Where Netfl Netlify is highly optimized for static site delivery uh, and and everything that you post up to it uh, goes into a CDN right away. So. Here's what the site ends up looking like. Um, you know, you can see uh, instead of a star, I've got like a little salt shaker. <laughs> uh, uh, so this is like my first link post of commentary on uh, Meta's um, very flawed Quest Pro product. Uh, and if I click in here, I apparently stopped my server. So that's, uh, <laughs> I'm on my local host. So let's go ahead and start that up. So script server. And that'll do things. Uh, I always turn caching off because it's so fast. I'd rather have the, the confidence to know everything was uh, from scratch. So I click in here, and now I'm at the, the, the permalink URL. But if I go back to this page, you know, you can see I'm, 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 I, I scroll back, and I'm, I'm back in March because I don't blog here very often. But I'm hoping to, hoping to write more soon. And you can see there's links to the side that just show, just show me the posts and then just show me like the link posts, the, the link blog. Um, an about page, the RSS feed, which I, 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 I learned RSS2 is not a particularly great spec. Um, and so if you want to write this kind of blog, you actually need to use an Atom XML feed because it allows you to specify um, both a alternate, which is like the real page uh, uh, link tag, as well as a related link tag. And that's what this is. So it allows RSS readers to be able to link to both your permalink of your post, as well as to the, the, the source link when, you, when you're writing a link blog style post. And then, of course, other other uh, uh, links over here. Uh, if you, if you uh, haven't gotten on the Mastodon train yet, or if you're about to, I encourage you to do it. It's less of a ghost town than you'd think. Again, I'm really good at sales. Uh, I am Searles at mastodon.social, uh, and, and I hope that you'll uh, be my friend. People are really uh, hopping on this week, so that's exciting. All right, so uh, all right. So here's um, you know where it lives on, on GitHub. Everything that I do just pushes up to here, and we're going to just make a quick change. Oh, I guess before I do that, was there anything else I want to show you? So go into the link posts. Uh, oh yeah, so responsiveness was important, right? Because like most of this stuff is happening on my phone. Um, I love the Safari's responsive editor for stuff like this. So here I am, even though it hasn't been updated since the iPhone 8 was the new phone, uh, it's an easy, quick way for me to be able to see, okay, so here's what it looks like on a phone. You can see that the, the, the nav just simplifies to just post links and about the, the important stuff. And you can scroll through. The other thing uh, that this can do is you can actually size dynamically, just like scoshing it up a little bit uh, up and down. So if, even if it doesn't fit a particular exact size of a device, um, or, you know, I can pick an iPad mini, you can click here and it can, you know, do the split screen thing or do, do what it looks like in portrait mode. Um, so if I, if I just play with this, you can sort of see the breakpoints are, it's like full screen cause you don't have a lot of screen space. And then it kind of becomes a page on the screen. And in fact, one of my little touches is the page curl animates as the page loads. Uh, and, uh, you scroll a little bit further and then, or you, you widen the viewport a little bit more. And then the navigation shifts from the top of the screen over to the side. Cause now there's enough room to render that. So I work in this mode all the time, and it's one way for me to consistently be switching between uh, 2x and 1x viewports of, 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 of point density, uh, as well as uh, you know big and small uh, uh, viewport sizes. So that's that. Uh, and then also light and dark mode. So I'm going to use Raycast here, because Raycast is a, a spotlight-like app that makes it very easy to switch between light and dark mode, which I've been doing constantly for the last few days. Um, okay, so here you can see uh, uh, that light mode and dark mode, the color schemes all transfer, you know, it's just a, a matter of taste, the shadows and all that, um, you know, they, they adjust. So 
Tailwind makes that again absurdly easy uh, to show you what that like configuration looks like. Is it's really just all CSS variables, which I think is really kind of cool. So here at the top of the CSS file, I just have you know a handful of colors, those purple accent colors, background border, text, uh, and so in light mode, this is those RGB values, space delimited, uh, and then in dark mode, here is all of those same values uh, again, space delimited and just eyeballed. The reason that they're RGB uh, and, and uh, space delimited is this is sort of a new thing in um, uh, Tailwind, but you can actually apply alpha mod uh, modifiers to these values if you set them up in your theme a particular way. So in, in this case, uh, you can see you know BG primary, that's actually getting, uh, I, I wrote a <laughs> premature abstraction. I wrote a variable or a, a function to, to extract this out. But like basically you take the variable name here and then you divide by the alpha, variable, uh, alpha value. You just give it that magical string and then all of a sudden all of these colors are usable in every single Tailwind construct really easily uh, between light and dark mode. With, and that's the last time that I really had to think about dark mode when I was making this. All right, so that's a little bit what the site looks like. Let's make a quick edit to show you what the publishing workflow looks like when I'm writing from my computer. So uh, let's make a quick change uh, to this post. Uh, you know, there's a traditional kind of like, you know, YAML style front matter at the top of the markdown file. Uh, let's just change this from 10 minutes to five minutes. And then uh, we'll hop over here into this view and we will just say, all right, uh, uh, change the, I don't know. I I never know when I'm writing prose, like my commit messages don't matter. I'll just commit it, whatever. And then update prod. When I do that, of course, you know, it goes into GitHub. Uh, we're very used to stuff going into GitHub. So you can see that prose uh, 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 link came. Now here I am in Netlify's backend and I wanna look at the deploys, right? So if I go into production deploys, you can see it's already building prose and we'll see how long this takes. It'll be long enough for me to wait on I hope, um, because it's surprisingly quick. I mean, you can look at the historical speeds. It's about 20 seconds to launch, which is like a lot faster than I'm used to, uh, especially considering that like it's installing a bunch of NPM stuff. It's running Hugo. Um, all right, so if we're here, our, our real page now, I'm gonna switch to light mode real quick. Uh, we're at our, our, our real page and now it's just five minutes. Okay, so that like that, that was reflected. Now that's great. I don't know why I said I switched to light mode. It's dark, it's morning, I'm, I'm, I'm getting over a cold. Uh, I'm, I need to keep things chill. Uh, that's me, I'm, I'm super chill. Uh, <laughs> and also have had too much cold medicine uh, this week. So um, here's the thing, all of this is great. All of this is a fun little project, but it requires me sitting at my computer uh, and, and, and uh, kind of treating blogging as work, which it is very much not work. It's just a thing that I like to do uh, when I've got some spare time. And like the idea of spending, uh, you know, time after hours or time on weekends, just kind of hold up into, uh, you know, uh, like, a, like, a, like a work-like posture, uh, just because I wanna share something quickly on my blog is all kinds of no fun to me. Uh, so what I did uh, was I adopted this thing called Netlify CMS. So Netlify published an open source CMS that is not technically tightly coupled to Netlify, but is totally kind of much easier if you, if you, if you uh, roll with uh, the Netlify server side stuff. And all I did was add a static admin folder over here uh, with a index.html file that simply uh, sprinkles in you know, their, their CDN link to, so basically the whole page is like a bookmarklet. Uh, it'll just kind of take over the whole uh, UI. And then I wrote some mobile overrides because it's actually surprisingly and sadly not a responsive app. And so when I'm on a phone, I just kind of hijack all the styles and make sure that they um, uh, contort to the, to the viewport, which uh, I can share uh, in, in a gist after this is done. All right, and then additionally, uh, the only real kind of configuration is just for it to, to learn a little bit about the file structure. Uh, that's the Netlify proper. Uh, where's the uh, YAML? It's a config YAML file. Static admin, I, I scrolled right past it. All right, so like it uses Git, it wants to know where to upload things. Um, it, it, convert slugs, it has like, you know, separate uh, collections, right? So like the links pages and how those look and then the post pages and how those look and then what parameters uh, you need. So that's the setup. 
And additionally, for identity, you can use Netlify's own identity thing. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock here. So I'm logging in here with my Netlify account against my own uh, you know, URL, but it's all happening over JavaScript via you know, XHRs. And so now I can see I've got uh, you know, my link posts. So posts are here, and link blog posts are here. Uh, you know, I can go in, I can edit any of this stuff and click publish and I'll commit to Git right away. Um, so, so to just kind of walk through what that feels like and, and, and what ends up resulting on, on the file system. Uh, let's make a quick post now. So we're going to, uh, I've got a post that I drafted that's sitting on my second screen. And this is a link to a really cool blog. I don't know how to pronounce this blog, Saloon. <laughs> Uh, but, but this blogger has produced some very, very good blog posts about the Ruby programming language over the last few years. And, and it's starting to take over the Google page rank because it's just so um, uh, accurate and informative. And he just wrote a post, or they just wrote a post about uh, Ruby 3.2 adding a new data class. Uh, so here's a post, I'm just going to blat it in there, uh, that I wrote in advance uh, about why I'm excited about this data class as an alternative to struct. Uh, here you can see I'm, I've got like my first code example ever on this blog, uh, so we'll see what that looks like. All right, so when I have all this stuff ready, draft is just going to skip it from uh, you know being shown in prod, but we're we're going to just go straight to prod and hope this works. Okay, so I'm going to plug publish. When publish happens, it should immediately update GitHub, so we can see it's got one new commit. Uh, the new commit has a conventionally built file name, so I don't have to think about file names. It's just year, month, date, and then a slugified version of the, uh, the title that I gave it. And if I ever change a title, I can hard code the URL so it doesn't change. And then if I, will this, okay, I'll hit refresh on this page. And it's already published. So I refresh the page now, and here it is. And you can see I've got um, syntax highlighting and all that is handled very easily by Hugo. There's a, a couple of manual steps to do, but it's not hard to figure out when you're reading the docs. Uh, and I, I kind of enjoy this sort of like cutout view of the code because it looks like it's sitting right underneath like the, the document paper because uh, it's the cool code. It's underneath the covers. And then, you know, I've got uh, different uh, code syntax highlighters for, for light and dark mode. So yeah, that's what I've been, you know, up to in this, um, you know, the beginning of the aftertime uh, uh, with uh, not being so reliant on uh, uh, Twitter anymore. And I'm also starting to get excited about other means of distribution. Like, so for example, I showed off um, Mastodon a minute ago. Mastodon like implements a thing called ActivityPub, and I don't really know what ActivityPub looks like, except it seems to be a neato way to both publish and consume and subscribe to content from heterogeneous types of sources. So instead of just following Mastodon uh, users, you could uh, uh, presumably like follow a blog that implemented ActivityPub appropriately. And so that's the next thing I'm going to look into is try to figure out whether or not I can make more things that I'm doing on the internet. Uh, sort of passively be subscribable through anything that uh, adheres to ActivityPub. And I have no idea if it's just like the next XHTML and we're all going to forget about it, or if it's actually going to become like, you know, the, 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 the plumbing for, you know, a, a new, more open set of, of tools and experiences on the web. So anyway, exciting times. Uh, if you, like me, are getting the itch to, to start blogging more or, or uh, uh, owning your portion of the internet in, in, in a means that you control a little bit more rather than being beholden to the social media companies, uh, I, I hope that this was a little bit of inspiration. And then check out the description notes and I'll share some links uh, uh, for, for how to get started yourself. All right, I'll catch you later.